Ho Chi Minh is a fantastic, vibrant city, full of optimism and ambition. It is growing fast, but it hasn't always been that way. These historic maps shows how Saigon, as it was then known, started as a fortified port city for its more important neighbour, Che Lon. With the support of the French, the Emperor Za Lom took control of these southern areas and formed a united Vietnam in 1802. His citadel, seen here in 1790, was quickly destroyed. But this 1867 map shows us how rapidly the city was developing. This tourist map from 1920 shows a highly planned city with wide, straight boulevards and excellent infrastructure. Here in District 7, a similar process of planned development is going on. So I'm standing here, we're in District 7. Behind me is Crescent Mall. This is all an area which has been developed really within the last decade. More than 15 years ago, this was empty land. And right now, it's obviously not developed to its peak. There is still a lot of space to develop here. There's a lot that can be done. But importantly, when this was planned, which it was, it was planned very carefully, this huge area of land between the two main roads has been left empty. Now, why have it been left empty? It's been left empty because the people believed that one day this had the potential to grow a lot bigger than it was right now. And at some point in the future, we would be able to fill this with a modern metro system, some kind of public transport which would allow more economic growth. And so this Crescent Mall, well developed now to an extent, is a perfect example of how with good planning we can develop it more in the future. Right now, we are having to build a brand new metro system in the middle of this city. But because we didn't plan in advance, this is having to be built uh, in a very disruptive way. It can't all be built underground exactly, but the parts that are, they're having to dig under existing structures. They're having to um, block off certain buildings. We can't get access to the street over here. And so how that compares to in District 7, where in advance they had planned for a metro system. They've left that ground available to be built on and so when the time comes to do so they will not have to cause the same amount of disruption as what we find here in District 1. Now one of the, one of the best examples of development that we can look at and which I'm going to use as our major case study over the next several weeks is the United States of America. If you go back 300 years, much of the United States of America was complete wilderness, was untouched, nothing was there, no people could live there. The very few people who had managed to get across to the New World did so along the very coasts where they lived um, in small settlements, they weren't connected to much of the rest of the world. And then everything started to change, beginning in the 19th century, the early 1800s, all of a sudden more people start to move into parts of America which people had never lived in before and within a hundred years from 1800 to 1900 that country was completely transformed for a number of reasons and so over the next several weeks what I'm going to start asking you to think about are what elements of that country, what were the things which which transformed it, what had to change for the whole country to develop. So for example, I think laws, uh, beyond law, we can also talk about the economy, we can talk about migration and the movement of people. All of these things have to change and are components of development. So we'll start off today by looking at Vietnam, looking how Vietnam has developed in recent history. What were the components of change 
for development in Vietnam. And then we will move on and look at our case study, America, the American West. What happened there? How did it happen? Is it still happening? And from that, over the next several weeks, maybe in six weeks time, you can start to make your own predictions. What will Vietnam or Korea or the UK look like in a hundred years time? What will shape that development? And maybe what things do we need to do now as a country and other people to make sure that that development takes place in the way we want it to?